Hey guys, welcome back for those that are coming back and for those that are new here, my name is Laura and as you could tell we are doing a 24 books in 2024 and this version is going to be read it or unhaul it. So if I do not read it by the end of this year it needs to come off my shelves. I am doing this as kind of like a reading challenge almost because a lot of these books are ones that have been on my shelf the longest or ones that I continue to put off reading. And I do have to say that none of these books are part of a series. These are all standalone books as far as as far as I'm aware. So that is what I'm doing this year. I know a lot of people are doing 24 books in 2024 that they're really looking forward to reading. This is kind of, like I said, a challenge for me because I am trying to read as many books as I can from my physical TBR. And I continually put off certain books and I continually look past certain books. So those are the books that are on this list and while I continue to put them off or like you know put them on the back burner they're not because I don't have interest in reading them. Obviously I do. I pick them up for a reason but I have my reasons about putting them off. So that is why they made this list. I want to read these books before the end of the year and again, if I don't, they will be making their way out of the house. So let's jump into the books I have here. I pulled a bunch of obviously 24 books off of my bookshelves. So the first books I'm going to get into here, it looks like I have romance on the top. So the first book I have here is called Ghosted by J.M. Darhauer. So there is the first book and I picked this up at Goodwill and while this wasn't one of the first books on my shelves I do feel like I continue to put this off. This has been on many TBRs this past fall. Obviously Ghosted reminds me of fall. Ghost you know. I, I don't know why I needed to really make that connection <laughs> but that is why it reminds me of fall. So again has been on TBRs but has not been actually picked up to read. Obviously that is why it is on here. So first book ghosted. The next book I have here I think this has only been on one of my TBRs but I have heard pretty good things about this one. I've heard not so great things about the second book this author released but I do want to read at least this one and that is Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. And again, I've heard really good things and don't know why I keep putting this off. Maybe I'll read this in February because the colors scream Valentine's Day. So maybe February is the month for this one. Then I have here a very popular book by a very popular author. This is one I have on my shelves. The only one I have on my shelves actually that I have not read by her yet. And I do not own another one of her books. I will get it eventually. But this one itself is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This one has been on my shelves for quite a while. So I do want to get to that this year. Maybe like spring, summertime. I don't know. We shall see. But another one that needs to be read. Then we have... Genuine Lies by Nora Roberts. This one was actually, you guys saved it from the unhaul I did recently. If you didn't see the unhaul, I will post the link to that video down below. I did do a massive unhaul. I do still have the boxes in my house. So I picked this book out because you guys told me that I should give it a shot before unhauling it. This is one of the very first books that I had on my shelves. So this needs to be read. I don't even know when was this published. Wow so this one was published in 1991 but this is a 2009 paperback edition. So there is that one. I have not read any Nora Roberts books so this will also probably be my first from her. So there is that one. And then we have, I have this in romance on my shelves. I don't necessarily know if it's a romance or not. Not quite sure. But it is In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. But there is that one. This is one I thrifted in the beginning of my reading journey. So again, another one that's been on my shelves for quite a little while. And then we have here just some literary and general fiction. So we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is and was a very popular book and so many people have so many good things to say but I feel like that is why I'm kind of putting this one off. I am scared to pick it up and 
it not live up to what I have in my mind because so many people really do love this book. So I feel like that is the reason I've been putting this one off, but I do want to read it this year. Obviously it is on this list. So there's that one. This one I picked up at the thrift store and for some odd reason, every time I just go to pull books off my shelf, this is never one I reached for and that is why I picked it out. So this one is The Half Moon by Mary Beth Keene. There is that one. And this one was actually part of a book of the month in May 2023 and that is when it was released. So it is not an old release. This is a newer release but just one that's been sitting on my shelf and like one I don't gravitate to. So that is why I picked this one. This one I also thrifted and I've heard really really great things about this book. So again another one I'm excited to jump into. I just never pull it from my shelves. This one. This one is on here because I need to give this author a second chance. This book actually Dave bought me but I read one of her books summer of 2023 and I didn't enjoy it and it would have been a DNF had I not been working on a reading vlog and even since I was working on a reading vlog it should have been a DNF but it wasn't. I really 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 had to push through that book and the author is Ellen Hildebrand. I'm giving her a second chance. I will probably give her a third chance if I don't like this book but I am hoping, praying, crossing my fingers that I really really enjoy this book. I know she did just announce that her last Nantucket novel might be this coming year. Maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this is the five star weekend. So I do have a whole shelf dedicated to Ellen Hildebrand books. It's not a whole shelf. It's a portion of my bottom shelf. You can't, yeah, you can see it. Here it is. And it is dedicated to Ellen Hildebrand books. But I have yet to pick up another one just because I had such a poor experience with the Hotel Nantucket. I do have to say I think I would have loved that book had it not had so many characters. There were just so many characters, there were so many like subplots going on that it was just, it was a little bit too much for me. So I'm hoping to really really love this and pick up more of her books. Then we have my one mystery here. This one is the Made by Nita Prose. I don't know why I always overlook this book. Every single time I go to make a TBR, this book is constantly overlooked and I just want to get to it. I want to get to it, especially since the sequel came out not that long ago. I want to get to this one. And then we have here a massive, I think all of the ones left are mystery thrill. No, I lied. We have two more here. So these are two popular authors. We have one book by Colleen Hoover. I have another like part of my shelf dedicated to her books over on the side. This one that I want to get to is one that I've heard really good things about and it is not her most popular but I think I'm going to get to that this year so I didn't want to put that on here because I didn't think it would be more of a challenge but this one is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I do want to get to this one this year. I want to start her books this year. I have quite a bit of them so that is why that's on here and then we have this one which I want to do a separate reading vlog for this author because I want to jump into more of his work but I'm a little intimidated to be quite honest. So that is Stephen King and this one is Billy Summers. This one again has been sitting on my shelf for quite a little while and I've heard great things about this one and I'm excited to jump into it but like I said his books for some odd reason just feel so intimidating to me. So that is why I have yet to pick this one up. Now we have all mystery thriller type books. We have one horror in here too but let's jump into these. So a lot of these are like older books. You'll see. I got a lot of them thrifted. So this first one here is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I have yet to pick up a Ruth Ware book and I want to change that this year. I know a lot of people really 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 enjoy her work so this may be the first one I dive into, may not be, but this one is on my list to read because it is the one that I've had sitting on my shelves the longest from her. And then we have this one, which honestly, I bought this one to take on our honeymoon when me and Dave first got married in 2019. I don't know when it was really published. Let me see. So it wasn't that new when we went on our honeymoon. I just, I don't know why, but this was on like an end cap somewhere and I ended up picking it up for our honeymoon. Have yet to read it. So this is the book that I have honestly owned the longest in this little like collection we have here. So needs to be read. The book I've had the longest and 
it's going to be red this year. There's that one. Then we have an author that I really have enjoyed, but I've heard not so great things about this book in particular, and I feel like that's why I've been putting this one off. And that one is A Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. Again, love her work, but have heard just not so great things specifically about this book. So that is why this is here. And then I have never jumped into this author's work but I do have some books of hers on my shelf and that is Lisa Jewell and this one is Then She Was Gone. What makes me stop picking this one up in particular is I heard this book like makes you feel a certain way when you read it like makes you it's like a dark feeling and I'm like I need to be in a certain mood to be okay with reading something like that so I'm like trying to prepare myself for when I want to pick this one up but I do want to read this by the end of this year because again this is one that's been on my shelf for quite a while so I do want to get to this one as well another one so I actually this was one of the authors I first picked up when I started reading it again last January and that is Paul Hawkins and the first book I picked up of hers was The Girl on the Train and then this one is Into the Water. I have not heard very much about this one. I actually, did I pick this one? No, I was going to say I picked it up from my library, but I didn't. Um, this one I haven't heard very much about, but I really enjoyed The Girl in the Train. So I'm curious to see if I like her other books. So that is why this one is on here. And then another one that I picked up from the thrift store. This one gives me winter vibes, so I'm going to try to read it January, February, or wait till winter comes around next year. But anyway, this one is The Family Plot by Megan Collins. Again, it just gives all the winter vibes, and I'm intrigued by this one. As you guys know, I don't normally read this synopsis, but I did read the synopsis of this, and that is what caught my attention. So in this one, it does say, they love true crime until they're at the center of one. And then in the first paragraph, it tells you, raised in a secluded island mansion deep in the woods and kept isolated by her true crime obsessed parents she is unable to move beyond the disappearance of her twin brother andy when they were 16. and then it says down at the bottom here it says as she grapples with her own grief and horror she realizes that her eccentric family and the mansion itself may hold the answers to what happened to her twin so that caught my attention and was an instant buy so there is that one the next one I have here was another one I got from the thrift store and that is The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. There's no reason I haven't read this yet. I got this when I didn't have very many books on my shelves and it always seems to be available on Libby. So why I haven't read this yet, I don't know. I need to read it. And as far as I could tell, it had really good reviews. So why this is not read, I have no idea. That is why that is on here. This next one is actually a popular one. I ended up getting this at my library sale for 25 cents. Now it is a little beat up, but it is what it is. But anyway, this one is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. There is that one. And I wanted to save that one for like the winterish time because I know it is a heavy book. And I don't know, it just gave me winter vibes for some reason, even though I had a butterfly on the cover, which would say spring, but it gave me winter vibes. So that is why it is on here still. Again, I am looking forward to this because I've heard really, really great things about this book. Again, it is a heavier book. So it is something a lot of people recommend looking up trigger warnings for. So there is that one. And then this next one here, I feel like I see at thrift stores all the time. Like it's at every thrift store I go to. So I ended up picking this one up at the very beginning of my reading journey, have yet to pick it up and actually read it or for it to be on any TBRs. So that is why this one's on here. It is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. So another one I'm looking forward to getting to. And then we have The Push by Ashley Audrain. And my brother's girlfriend has read this and it's one of her like books she constantly like recommends. Me and her really seem to enjoy the same type of thriller so I'm excited to jump into this one. I also heard someone here on booktube talk about this one and say how it was just such a good book and it's like twisty and there's a lot to it and I'm excited to jump into it. And then the last thriller we have here is The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Now this one I feel like I may personally like this but there are a lot of people who it's really controversial so there are a lot of people who love this book and there are a lot of people who 
do not like this book so much and I have a feeling I'm going to be in the group of people who really enjoy it. As you guys know I love reading books that are controversial but sometimes it does put me off because I'm like I don't know where I'm going to be. What if this is a book I really don't love? Like I felt that way for Assistant to the Villain. I put off reading Assistant to the Villain for a long while and then I was like you know what I just need to read it and I did and I loved it so I feel like I hope that is what this is going to be for me. So there's the writing retreat and then last but not least we have a horror book and this one a lot of people say amazing things about this author and that is why I want to jump into this because if I love this I feel like I'll pick up other things from this author as well because like I said people say really good things about her work and that is Mexican Gothic. This did end up on one of my TBRs this year but I did not end up getting to it and then I just like completely put it off. So I do want to get to this one this year like I said a lot of people have really good things to say about Sylvia Marina Garcia. So there is book 24. So those are my 24 in 2024. If I do not read them, they are leaving the shelves. So here's the hoping we read them. Here's the hoping that there are a lot of good books in this pile, a lot of five star reads. We're hoping, we're praying. 2024 has not been a great start to my reading year. So I hope that is going to change here in a bit. So praying we have some good books here but if you have read any of these let me know which ones you have read did you like them did you not like them did you put a list together for 24 books you want to read in 2024 and did you have a reason for putting those specific books on your list and what are those books on your list you guys know I love hearing from each and every single one of you I love going through the comments and interacting with you guys that is what that's what I'm here for that's what I love that's why I started this channel I love talking books not very many people are bookish people around me so I love talking to you guys make sure to leave them down below thanks as always guys I appreciate each and every Every single one of you you have no clue how much it means to me for you guys to be here if you like this video make sure to give it that thumbs up and if you want to see more bookish related videos make sure to stick around I love interacting with you guys I love chatting with you guys so stick around we would love to have you and again as always guys thank you thank you thank you and I will see you guys soon